By the time I stepped outside, the leaves were already on fire. I ran as fast as I could from the flaming manor, pulling my shirt over my mouth and nose in order to keep from inhaling the fumes. I ran deep into the tall, lush forest that surrounded the large mansion that was now burning to cinders. I sat down, leaning against a tree to try and catch my breath. Thankfully, it was beginning to rain and therefore, covering up my tracks. With the threat of being caught less urgent, I was able to get my mind all in one place. I, Eris Johnson, had just set fire to the White House, with the President locked inside. I took my backpack off of my shoulders and unzipped one of the pockets. I grabbed a small handful of Ritz crackers and put one in my mouth as I sat back up. I got back to walking, knowing I would need to find shelter before nightfall. I decided to try and get out of the forest and to a nearby town before sunset. I walked for what felt like hours until I finally saw a building. A small hotel, by the look of it. I quickly ducked behind the building, sure to be out of sight from both the security cameras and the road, and began to change. I put on a black t-shirt and some dark blue jeans. I also put my hair down and put on a floppy green cap that hid my facial features pretty well. As the president's daughter, everyone likely thought I was dead, and it was better that way. I then grabbed my purse and put a couple assorted coins in a plastic bag. I then walked inside the hotel, making sure to make myself look small and fragile. I'm 16, but I look much younger. I walked up to the person that was working at the counter and said excuse me, ma'am, could you help me? I was going back home from school with my big brother, and I got lost, and I walked all the way here. Of course, none of that was true, but I was a pretty effective liar when I had to be. Oh my goodness, my girl, of course. Would you like me to call your brother for you? She appeared to be an old woman, with gray hair and many wrinkles. She reminded me of my grandmother, but more pleasant. But I don't know his phone number. I pouted. Oh dear. Um, how about I get you a room to stay in for the night? Would that be okay? Thank you thank you thank you. I opened my bag and pulled out the plastic bag I had cleverly filled with coins just moments before. I then grabbed the card she handed me and ran to the elevator. I punched the number for the top floor where my room was located. I quickly ran into my room and shut the door behind me, sure to lock it. I then tossed my bag onto the bed. I take a quick shower and then, wrapped in my towel, I turn on the TV. I flip to the news channel, and the title says Breaking News, President of the US and his daughter dies as a result of a fire. I chuckle to myself and put on the robe that is in the closet. I watch as pictures of me and my dad flash across the screen as a memorial. The newscaster then announced that my body has not been found and that the funeral is to be held in one week. I turn off the TV, not needing the reminder that I was a killer. I lay down in bed, trying to think of why I killed my father. We had so many good memories together, it's not like I didn't love him. I think I did what I did because I didn't like what he was doing. He trapped millions of people with mental illness in cages, saying it was contagious. They have all either died or gotten pretty close. I close my eyes and slowly fall asleep, thinking that anything that my subconscious can come up with would be better than this world. Boy was I wrong. My nightmare starts, and for a moment, I thought I was awake. I was in my hotel room, and everything seemed simple. Then, the room shifted. It was now my room at the White House. I smelled smoke, and I saw my father rush into my room. Honey, come here, I'll protect you. He yelled at me. I run to him, and he holds me in a hug. Until that is, he turned from my father to a monster of flame. He has a humanoid figure, but he is made entirely of fire. He locks me in his arms, and he is much stronger than me. By the time I wrench myself from his arms, the rest of the room is on fire, with no way out. I'm surrounded by searing heat, and I'm so, so scared. I try to produce tears to possibly cool off my burning face. The force I use to try and sob makes me lightheaded and dizzy. I fall to the ground and try to get up, but I can't. I see and feel the fire getting closer until it is on me. It hurts so bad. I would rather die now than keep suffering this pain. Unfortunately, I do not die or wake up. 
I lay there, in searing pain that I am unable to do anything about. Eventually, the pain becomes too much, even in a dream, and I blacked out. When I come to, I am awake. I can still feel the tingling on my skin. I get out of my bed, feeling as though I barely slept at all. I walk to the bathroom and use the toothbrush and toothpaste provided to brush my teeth, and then I put it in my bag. I pack my meager supplies and head downstairs. Downstairs, the breakfast buffet is full of people. I grab a bunch of small cereal containers, some water, and other non-perishable foods, and quickly run out of the building. I shove some more Ritz crackers into my mouth. I head to the public bus stop and take a bus downtown. I looked around for places that were hiring, and I found one place, a Target. A week later, I was working $13.21 an hour. From then on, I worked my way up, eventually graduating college and getting a better paying job. I eventually adopted two kids with my girlfriend, and now I have a few grandkids. I use a fake name now, and no one has discovered what I did. That was a good bedtime story, Grandma. Is it real, says Everly, one of my grandkids. Of course it's not real. It was very good, but now it's time for you and your brother to go to bed. Say good night to Grandma and Grammy. Says my daughter, Willow. Good night, dearies. I say. I give them each a kiss on the cheek. Good night, darling, I love you, says my loving wife, Adelaide. Good night, Han. I give my wife a kiss, and we both get in bed. I laugh to myself, knowing that no one will ever know what I did.